Well, good morning, church. Can you take some more? Nobody's sure. <laughs> amen, amen. I am... Whew, I'm excited this morning. I'm excited because I believe I've heard God and I've heard this message. I preach it to myself quite a few times already. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just kind of still lingering. Thank you, Lord. You know what, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you right now for your goodness. We thank you that you are so faithful. You are so faithful that you promised that we two or three gather in your name. There you are in our midst. And not only just to be in our midst, but you are in our midst to bless. Not to curse. So I thank you that you pour out a blessing upon each and every person under the sound of my voice. This morning in Jesus' name. Father, have your way this morning. Holy Spirit, we say you are most welcome. You are most welcome to lead, to guide, to add, to subtract. You speak. I thank you for the anointing to preach and teach your word this morning. I thank you for eyes that can see what the Spirit of God is uh, showing and ears to hear what His voice is saying. I thank you for the transformation of our minds and the renewal of our hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus. And by faith we receive it right now. In Jesus' name. If you receive it, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. So, I'm just, I'm just going to stay here by Chelsea. Chelsea, we are in part four of a series. Do you know what the series is called? Loaded. Come on, you've got to say it with some faith. Say loaded. Because loaded. we are loaded with more than we realize. And what God has been doing over the last few um, uh, parts of the series is just beginning to unveil layer by layer by layer what is already deposited in us. And I'm so excited. I mean, the last message, we just heard that you loaded with Jesus. I mean, we can just drop the mic and go home right there. But he's so good. He's just so good. And so today, I'm going to do part four. So I, I got to give you a disclaimer. I'm going to give it to you right up front. I got way too much to tell you and too little time. So what we're going to do is believe God. Is that okay? So as much as you want, he's going to pour out. Because he will quench every thirsty soul. Everybody that is hungry. He, here's the thing. I love what Bill Johnson said. He said, only in the kingdom, the more you eat, the more hungry you get. <laughs> Isn't that good? Come drink of me. Come and eat of me. Glory to God. So open up your Bibles to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. The Acts of the Apostles. It should be called the Acts of the Holy Ghost. That's what it should be called. Acts chapter 3 is just after Acts chapter 2. For those of you not sure. It's wedged in between Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 3. And we're going to begin in verse 1. Amen. It said, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. So they were churchgoers. As they approached the temple, a lame man from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. Verse 3. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter looked at him. Peter and John looked at him intently. That means purposefully. There, there wasn't a mistake. He looked, they looked at him intently. Look what it says. And Peter said, look at us. You see, because have you ever encountered someone that, that is low? Someone that is down, that thinks low of themselves. It's like they look at you, but they don't look at you. It's, like they, it's almost like you're too, high of, you, you're too way above them to even make eye contact. But they say, hey, look here. Because you, sometimes you've got to see yourself higher. He said, look at us. But I like this, what it, what it, what it goes on to say in verse 5. And the layman looked at them eagerly, expecting what? Some money. Because that's what he's asking for. But I love this. And Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you. I want to say this. They were not broke. I like to put this in here and say, silver and gold, I don't have on me right now. 
But if you do take Snapscan, I can snap you something right now. I'm sure if they had Snapscan back in the day, Peter's like, yo, you got, some, you, got a, you got a barcode? But it said, I don't have this. Silver, I, I don't have. Gold, I don't have. But I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Woo! That's good Bible right there. Then Peter took the layman by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. You see, if you, if you remember, if you remember verse 2, it said that he was lame from birth. You'd be shouting in verse 7 when it said that the ankles were instantly healed. I want you to see this. Let's not read over this like it's a fictional story or it's just like something somebody made up. He was lame from birth. Could not, never have, probably never will walk. And all of a sudden, someone gave them something that they had, and, they, and he's instantly. Why? Because God stands outside of time, and you function like him. <sighs> instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with him. How did he know how to walk? How did he know how to jump? How did he know how to leap? But something happens when the Spirit of God touches you. Then all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. Then they realized he was that beggar that they saw so often at the beautiful gate. And they were absolutely astounded. And they all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. So I'm going to give you the title of today's message. It's a very simple title. I had a whole list of them. And, I was, and the Lord just said, can you just keep it simple? I said, okay, Lord. You see, because here's the thing. The reason why we're going to find out another weapon is because what was our foundation scripture? It says this, for though we, uh, for though we, just give me a second. Can you put up 2 Corinthians chapter 10 for me? You don't have it? That's cool. That's cool. Don't worry about it. But I'm going to read it to you because I want you to see it. Glory to God. I'm going to give it to you in a second. Can't believe this preacher don't have his notes. No. I'm going to give it to you in a second. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. So, so what we're talking about is you being loaded, right? Peter and John were loaded. So they were walking in the flesh, but they didn't wage war according to the flesh. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But what are they? Mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Are you with me? So we got to establish that. So write down your next weapon that God is unveiling. Are you ready? The name of Jesus is a weapon. The name of Jesus is a weapon. Now, here's the thing. I pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to just take whatever scenarios or precepts that you've had uh, uh, just around this name and allow him to just unveil and open up some more to you today in Jesus' name. Because here's the thing. I really, truly believe and I feel this in my heart that the church has become so familiar with the name of Jesus. I really do. And I believe that they've lost their reverence for that name. Just turn on Netflix. You think people don't know Jesus' name? They use it to express themselves. They're not using his name for the intended purpose because they've lost the reverence of that name. Write this down. Because what you don't value in your heart, you devalue in your life. Can I say that again? What you don't value in your heart, you devalue in your life. Hear me clearly. You can have a beautiful wife, tick all your boxes, and you can devalue her. Guess what? You won't value her in your life. Because what you don't value, you devalue in your life. So I want you to write this. This is point number one. I'm going to give it to you. A name. We're talking about the name of Jesus, right? A name is only as valuable as your awareness of the weight that it carries. A name. So, so, so people have different names. So, so here's the thing. Let me, let me give you an example. So different names carry different weight. So let's just say you were born into royalty. Your name already carries weight. You haven't taken one step yet. 
You don't even know your ABCs, but your name alone carries weight because of where you come from. Let, let's just say you, you have, uh, who knows Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, like those guys, Bill Gates. I'm sure you've heard of any one of those guys. Guess what? If they walk up in a room, what carries weight? What if there's someone who says, hey, listen, Bill Gates is coming to your restaurant. Ah, sorry, can you tell him that we just don't have any room for him? No, 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 what are you going to do? You'll make room. Why? Because his name carries weight. Are you with me? And the reason why names carry weight is that either they were born into it, or it was, or they achieved something, or they, um, you, you get what I'm saying? Or they affected culture in a way, and so their names begin to carry weight. Are you with me? Let's make a churchy. If I were to na name names like Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, like Stephen Furtick, I don't know, name your, your favorite preacher. If I were to name their name and they rocked up in the room, guess what? Their name carries weight to you. Are you with me? So now we're talking about the name of Jesus. But now that's why I say a name is only as valuable as your awareness of the weight that it carries. So I can say, hey, you loaded with the name of Jesus and you walk out here and you still get defeated. How are you defeated with you have been given the name that is above all names? And you walk out here defeated. You know why? Because you are unaware of the weight that that name carries. It's important to understand this. So do you know what weight the name of Jesus carries? Can we go there? Let's go there. Because here's the thing. When you discover the weight that it carries, I'm talking about the name of Jesus. When you discover that weight, you won't use it loosely anymore. You won't use it as an adjective in your everyday conversation. Oh, yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, they... they yeah, I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting on my Uber Eats because it's late. Can they hurry up in Jesus' name? No, no. You're losing, you are diminishing the weight and the value of that name. We just saw that name get a person that was laying from birth up. And you want to devalue it with Uber Eats? <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. Let me give you an example. Let's, let's make up an example because maybe we can get, maybe we can just modernize this a bit. Okay, so let's just say Noah, right? Noah, I'm going to use you as an example. Let's just say Noah, you write this incredible song, dude. I don't know if I'm prophesying or not, but this is the example I'm going to go with. So let's just say Noah writes this incredible song and he has to go to an award. Like he's, he's being, they've said, hey, you've won this award. You need to attend this event. But here's the deal, Noah. It's black tie. So you've got to suit up. You can't wear your Vans, you can't wear your J's, you can't wear nothing like that, you've got to suit it up. But now here's only one problem. Noah doesn't own a suit. Maybe he can't afford a suit. So now here's what I, here's, here's what I suggest. So Noah, what I want you to do is I want you to go see my boy James. Okay. And when you go see James, you don't use your name. When you go see James, just tell him I sent you. Because here's what I want you to see is that when I go see James, or when Noah goes to see James, and he's like, he doesn't say, hi, I'm Noah, can you help me out? No, 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 he goes and says, hi, Brett sent me. I'm coming in his name. So this is what I want you to see. So they no longer treat Noah like Noah. They treat Noah like me. Are, are, you, are you getting my picture? So Noah goes in there, he may be timid, he may not be able to afford what's in the store. None of those things matter because he's going with something that carries weight, and that's a name. So he goes in there, and James is like, James don't see Noah no more. The minute he used the right name, he got treated accordingly. So he got hooked up. Come on, Jesus. From head to toe. So here's what I want you to understand. Is that when you go in that store, Noah, your name carries no weight. But when you go into a place and someone has given you the authority to use their name, all of a sudden you do carry weight. You've just got to get understanding and light's got to come that I don't have to go in my name anymore. I've just got to go in the one that sent me. Because they're going to treat me as if the one that sent me. I'm trying not to jump out of my skin here. I'm so excited. 
So give me, let me give you point number two. You ready for point number two? Jesus gave you power of, power of attorney over his name. Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, perfect Jesus, gave you power of attorney over his name. Let me explain. Let's just act like you don't know what that means, right? Let me give you a definition of power of attorney. It's the authority to act for another person in, speci in, in specified or all legal or financial matters. Are you with me? Let me give you a real life example. So Kim, my beautiful wife, my baby mama, all of that good stuff, she has power of, power of attorney over everything. You know what that means? She can roll up at APSA and say, um, can I check this bank account, please? I'd like to move this money to there. I'd like to do this A, B, C, D. And you know what they do? They just, she, all she drops is, I have power of attorney. Guess who they treat her like now? Do you think they still treat her as Kim? No. It may be my bank account. But because she has power of eternity, eternity, power of attorney over it, she has the authority to act as if she was me. So when I say that Jesus has given us power of attorney over his name, that means that he's given us the authority to act as if we were him. Now here's the thing. I won't give power of attorney to someone I don't trust. Would you? Would you, so you're rolling in it. I'm talking about you just like, you just like, what you need. Are you going to give me power of attorney? In Jesus' name, maybe. <laughs> you don't know. But the thing is, if you don't trust me, you'll be very reluctant to give it to me. But now here's Jesus saying, I'm going to give you power of attorney. And you know what the only qualification is to get it? You must be born again. He made his name accessible to everybody that would receive him. Wow. So you're telling me that if I've been born again for three minutes, I have the same authority as someone that was born, born again for 30 years? Absolutely. But do you have light on what you carry? Do you understand with what you loaded with? You have been given power of attorney. Of his name. Yes. Woo! So, so I gave my wife power of attorney. And guess what? Robin mentioned it earlier. Who are we? We're the bride of Christ. So as his bride, he said, hey, I'm going to give my bride everything that's mine. That's some good news right there. When you begin to see yourself in your rightful place, all of a sudden you have access to something that was always available. I heard this testimony um, the one day there was this lady and she worked for, um, she, she used to like clean the house and, and like really like uh, work for this woman for like until this woman went to be with Jesus. Like, and so what this lady did was the only thing this lady left her was the certificate. And the one day, and she lives like in a shanty, like a shack kind of thing. And the one day this, this preacher walks up in there and he's like, hey, what's this? He's like, oh, no, she loves, she loves the lady she worked for all these years. And you know what? This is so special too because it was handwritten and everything. And she's got it up in a little frame and everything on the wall. And this guy looks at this thing. Now, she can't read, by the way. So she looks at this thing. Uh, the, the preacher looks at this thing. He's like, hey, do you mind if I take this with me and just go and get it inspected? So the lady's like, look, as long as you bring that back because it's dear to me. He's like, no, you know Anyway, the lady lets him go, and he comes back, only to discover that she's been living all these years in a shack when that piece of paper that was handwritten, that woman she worked for left her every single thing she owned. So she was living in a shack, but she had that entire estate was hers. So until she knew what was hers, she couldn't lay hold of it. So when Jesus now says, I've given you what's been given to me, all of a sudden when the lights go on, when the revelation comes, now all of a sudden you're like, hold on, I don't have to put up with certain things because that's not my portion. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. So guess what? The earth and the fullness belongs to who? Come on, you've got to be bold about this thing. The earth and the fullness belongs to who? Why? Because he's given it to you. You didn't earn it. He gave it to you. 
glory. So we have to look at what weight or what authority Jesus was given. So I'm just going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to show you what weight Jesus carried. Are you with me? Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to begin in verse 5. It says, you must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took on the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. I'm just showing you the transition, right? Look what it says. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. They that humbled himself shall be exalted. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. This is what I want you to get now. Lean into this. Therefore, because of all the previous, that we just, the, the previous verse that we just read, therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor. God the Father elevated Jesus to the highest place of honor and gave him what? Can you see it up there? What did it give him? He could have given him anything else, but he gave him something that was of highest honor. And what was that? The name. He gave him the name that was above all names. And at that name, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is what I want you to see. The Father gave Jesus the highest authority in three different realms. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. He even got authority in hell. <laughs> Are you getting to see what authority Jesus has now? What authority Jesus' name carries now? Look, and so now, as you begin to get more understanding, look what began to happen in, in Matthew chapter 10. Ooh, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Matthew chapter 10. Let's go to verse 1. It says, and when he, talking about Jesus now, when he called the 12 disciples to him, so he called them where? To himself. Where you go matters. Who you get it from matters. So Jesus called the 12 to himself. And look what he did. He gave them power. That word power is translated authority, dunamis. He gave them authority. You know what the definition, I'm going to act like nobody knows what the definition of authority means. Let me give you a definition. I like definitions. The power to give orders or make decisions. Just put yourself in the context of what Jesus is doing right here. He's been given all authority in heaven, earth, and hell. And he's saying, I'm going to give you authority. <laughs> I'm going to give you the power to give orders, to make decisions, the power or right to direct or control someone or something. Something. Look what it said in, in Matthew 28, 18. I'm just wanting you to see what authority Jesus has. And Jesus came and said to them, this is Jesus speaking, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So Jesus was given how much authority? Just need to establish this in your heart. How much authority? What's, what's left out of all? So he's been given all authority. All. Settle this in your heart. He's given you given this all. He's been given all authority. And then he has the audacity and the faith to turn around and say, Now I'm gonna give you power of attorney over my name. Let me, let me put it this way. That means that he, he, he was given all authority. You all agree? So now guess what? You have access to all authority. He turned around and said, because I have all authority, I'm going to give you access to all authority. Just use my name. Just use my name. Oh, you've got to catch this. Just use my name. That's why we spent a whole message talking about the power of your tongue, right? And if words matter... If words really do matter, if words really do carry any kind of weight, then the fact that Jesus is saying, and according to the word, then that means that Jesus gave us power of attorney over sickness and disease. He gave us power of attorney over demons. He gave us power of attorney over lack, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, over death, hell, and the grave. If that's according to what I read in the word, that's the authority that he's given us. 
So we need to lean into what God has already made available. We're not trying to earn something. We're trying to discover something. I knew you and formed you and fashioned you in your mother's womb. He already knew. So when you get, here's the thing. When you get your cell phone, right, do you, it's, what's it, it's already preloaded with everything that that phone is capable of doing. So what you do is you discover what it's able to do. You're just discovering, but it's already done. Likewise, the, oh, God has put something in you. He's loaded you. I want you to walk out here saying, hey, I'm loaded. Like things come against you, I'm loaded. Because my weapons are not of the flesh. My weapons are mighty in God, so I can pull down the strongholds that's trying to come against my life. Are you with me? So when you know who's backing you, when you know whose authority you're going in, all of a sudden you got a little bit of different confidence. All of a sudden you got a little, you got a little, uh, uh, you got a little, little different step in your step when you know who's backing you. Don't you agree? Because you're representing someone that has all authority as if you were them. And I know that there's, I know that culture today has kind of made it seem like you know, that was for the early church. You know, like laying hands on the sick, that was for the early church. Praying in tongues is for the early church. Like, like seeing people, like 3,000 people in one day from one message get saved. Like, that was for the early church. You know, like that's why they needed to see the power of God. Like, that was for the early church. But now here's the problem. For you to get born again, you need the same Jesus that they needed back in Acts. We all say, like, we want to, you must do it like the book of Acts. Well, do you want to or not? Because they believed the things that Jesus said. A man must be born again. He didn't complicate this thing. Like just 10 steps to salvation, there was one and his name is Jesus. There's only one way, it's a narrow way. He's the gate, you go through him. His name is Jesus. Because Jesus said this, the works that I do, shall you do also. And get this, and greater are you kidding me? Have you ever read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Like, have you really read it? Have you really read where it says that everybody that was sick that came to him got healed? Every, I've never seen one demon defeat Jesus. In fact, when Jesus just rocked up minding his own business, like, what you doing here? It's not supposed to be your time. Leave us alone. That's what happened because of the authority that he carried. All of a sudden, you carry that same authority? It's the only difference is that you don't know it. And you haven't accepted it. But can we accept the authority that Jesus has poured out for us? So who has all authority? Jesus. Who has all authority? Come on, say his name. Jesus. Who was given all authority? Jesus. So who gave the disciples their authority? You've got to say it with a little bit more confidence. Who gave the, the disciples, he called them to himself, and he gave them what? Authority, right? So who gave them the authority? Jesus. I want you to see this next part. Of the, I want you to see this text because it says that Jesus gave them. If you want to put, let me put it this way. Jesus could only give him what he had. So Jesus couldn't turn around and give this 12 disciples something he didn't have. So the fact that Jesus gave them authority, it means that he had authority. Are you with me? I love that. I love there's a, a scripture that is the centurion and, and he comes to Jesus and says, hey, I am a man under authority because I understand authority. So all I need to do is I need to come under your authority and if, if I say to one go, they go. If I say one come, they come. So I understand what it means to be under authority or to be in authority. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come under your authority because I understand all you have to do is speak. Because if you speak, everything is settled because you, you have the authority. You've been given all authority. And this man wasn't even part of the 12. He had such light, he had such revelation that all I have to do is call on the one that has authority. His faith was so radical, he didn't even need Jesus to come all the way to his house. He's just like, Jesus, I understand what you, you just have to speak. So speak and my servant will be healed. Because I understand authority. What did he say? I put my word in whose mouth? Your mouth. So now when he says, I've given you all authority, guess what? Now you get to speak like him. That's why it says, speak spirit. Speak spirit. 
You were spirit first. You designed an, in the image and likeness of your father. How, did the earth, how was the earth created? He spoke it into existence. How were you created? You created to do the very same thing. And you don't do it in your strength, in your authority. You do it in his. Are you with me? So Jesus couldn't give them anything that he didn't have. That sounds just like Acts chapter 3 that we read. When Peter and, uh, when Peter and John rocked up there, they said, I'll give you uh, silver and gold have I none. But what I do, what? Have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. I can only give you what I have. But they, if you backtrack, these disciples were as scared as anybody else because they didn't understand what they had yet. So when, they, when it gets to the book of Acts, they understand what they carry. That's why they're like, hey, these things in the natural, I don't need to fight this with, with natural things. I'm going to give you what I really have. It's more valuable than silver and gold. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Because I give you what I have. And he called the 12 and he gave them power. He gave them the authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So now we understand what authority he gave, right? Okay? So now if you go down to verse 7, it says this. As you go. As you go. So... The disciples were given something. We can all establish and agree according to the scriptures that Jesus gave them something. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yes. yes? So, if I read correctly, Jesus gave them authority. Now, this is Jesus. Like, Jesus, Savior of the world, perfect Jesus. He gave, you know, I've had times where people laid hands on me and I physically felt something shift and change in my life. There are times like where people speak over my life and not like in the same moment things shift and change. We couldn't have kids. Someone come and they spoke a word and now Grace is in kids' church. I'm t I, I've experienced and I've, I'm not telling you something that I haven't experienced. Right? How much more when Jesus, God, let me put it this way, God Jesus, God in the flesh says, Hey Chelsea, hey Noah, I'm going to give you authority. Not anybody's authority. My authority. You don't have to wait for Prophet Jojo. You got Jesus himself saying, hey, I give you my authority. So we've all established that they got given something. But now it says this. In order to see what they were given activated, they had to do one thing. Anybody know what it is? They had to go. So Jesus first gave them something and then said, hey, now go. But as you go, you're not going solo. You're not going alone. You're not going unequipped. In fact, Jesus tells him, take nothing. He told them to take nothing, yet they, they didn't go empty-handed. They didn't go unequipped. He specifically said, don't take anything with you. But yet, they were successful. How is that possible? They were taken care of. They were sorted out when they went because they carried something that was more valuable thing than things in the natural. As you go, What's inside of you gets activated. <sighs> Again, I'm just trying to drive home the authority that Jesus has given you. So they didn't go in their own authority. Because when you, have, when you understand authority, now it gives you the, what, what your legal rights are and what you can do according to the authority that was given you. Yes. Are you with me? Yeah. So as you go, preach. Preach. You get to preach, you know that? You think you just need a mic and a stage? No. As you go, preach. Yes. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then what does it do? What you got to do after that? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. You. Not the apostles. You. Amen. I know there's a gift of healing. I understand that. But he's talking to regular disciples. Regular disciples say, hey, as you go, what I've deposited in you, that's when it gets activated. You want to play a new song? You can't play a new song unless you put your fingers on the keys. As you go. As you go. As you go. As you go. As you go, what's inside of you gets activated because that's called faith. And then it goes on to say, because freely you have received, you didn't earn it. Freely you have received, now what you got to do? Freely give. So freely you've received my authority, now freely give. Let me put it another way. Freely you've received my authority, now freely use it. Freely 
use it. Let me show you how simple this can be, right? So my personality is to be at home, in my bed, with a TV on. Like, I don't want to talk to nobody. Like, I know it's strange because I'm talking, like, right now. But my personality, I'm the quiet one in the house. Ask any of my kids. I'm the quiet one. Kim, Kim doesn't, she's just like, no, you're not. There's my mother, she's sitting there. I'm the quiet one. I'm the quiet one. Go online, church. Glory to God. <laughs> but but my, my personality, I would rather listen than speak. Really. Like, that's just who I, like, it's just me. Right? So, I, I'm telling you this for a reason because... For me to step out of my comfort zone, of my personality, and to go up to someone that I have, I don't know you from Adam, and to engage in a conversation with the intent for you to meet Jesus, or just to encounter the love of God, like it's counter my personality. So there's this dude, so, um, so, so we got a dog, right? It's a border collie, and he's got tons of energy, so it's like I've got to hit the tennis ball out there on the field, so I'm hitting it, and I'm, he's just going up and down, up and down, right? Minding our own business. And so what happens is, so this youngster, he must be about 15, 16, Leon's his name. Such an amazing guy. Young guy walking, and he's walking on the, and it looks like he almost like missed the pavement. All of a sudden, it looks like, I was like, yo, I said, did you pull a hamstring? Walking. There's nobody around. Like, did you pull a hamstring? He's like, ah, oh, man, you know, it's my knee. I was like, well, what happened to your knee? Because now my antennas is up, and I'm, you see, because as I go, because you must understand, I'm standing over here, and I've got what he needs. He doesn't know it. Like the beggar didn't know it. Because you don't know who you're passing by that needs what you have. And they can't experience unless you go. Now this doesn't mean, because in my perception of an evangelist was that you've got to do ten crusades, you've got to stand up on a box and scream to everybody, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. That's what I thought. And I was like, how do, am I ever going to talk to people about Jesus? Like, it's so counter my personality. Anyway, so I step out by faith. That's how. I believe the Lord to fill my mouth. So Leon's like, no, he's near so. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like, well, Jesus is going to show up. He's not. Like, that's the thing. And anyway, so Leon is telling me all about his knee. He hurt his knee at playing soccer, whatever. So I was like, okay, cool, Leon. This is what I want you to do. Can you check, like do something to tell me how actually bad it is? Like, I don't want you to fake nothing. Like, just tell me, because he has no idea where I'm going with this thing. So he has no reason to hide anything. So he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, if I just do this, like it's really sore, like he can't bend down, all of these kinds of things. As a young guy, and as a young guy that plays, likes playing soccer, that's like not cool. So anyway, he tells me, I was like, yo, Leon, I was like, do you mind if I pray for you? He's like, Shh. Like, he's shocked. Like, what do you mean? Like, we're in the middle of the road. Like, what? And he was like, uh, okay. Because here's the thing. You think people are always going to just shut you down, but sometimes they're just waiting for you to go. Because the grace of God goes before you. He opens doors that you think are closed. So I said, hey, Leon, can I pray for you? And he's like, okay, cool. He's like, okay. And he puts his knee out like this. <laughs> I put my hand on his knee. And I pray. And we, and we speak, I speak to the pain, we pray. So now, done, I say, Leon, here's it, my man. I, don't, I want you to be completely honest with me right now. I want you to try and look and find the pain. So now Leon's confused because he's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. He's like, okay. And he's like this, and like his expression starts changing on his face. And he's like... <laughs> and he's, he's do, like... like like, have you ever encountered someone that just don't, like, you know, like when you write tests and you didn't study, you're like, I don't know what's happening. And then you find that you passed and you're like, how did I pass? Like that confused look. And Leon is like, you know what he asked me? He's like, I've got a hoodie, Yankees hat on, like I'm out here playing with my dog. He's like, are you a pastor? I was like, I was like, that's got nothing to do with anything. What does that have to do with anything? I said, I am, but that's not the point. He's like, what, did, what happened? I was like, that's Jesus. I was like, that's, it's not me, it's Jesus. All I did was make myself available. And the fact that he did that for you was just to show you how much he loves you. Because you're precious in his sight, Leon. And Leon is like glowing. He, he still doesn't know what's going on. So anyway, so he, like he leaves down the road, right? And, and he's like, he tells me where he lives, what school he goes to. He's telling me all his business. Because as you go, What's inside of you will be activated. 
and you see him going down the road and he keeps looking back and he keeps doing things and he's just like, you see, because when you've never encountered him before, it's like, it's, it's like, oh my goodness, I've been blinded all this time. This lame beggar sitting by the gate, I don't believe that was the first time that they ever passed him by. Because it says he's been lame since birth. They took him every day. And they were churchgoers. You, you think they didn't pass that temple? But that day, that day, that day he got what he wasn't even looking for. And guess what the result was? He came leaping, jumping, walking, and doing one thing, praising God. Because as you go, what's inside of you will be activated. So here's the thing. That things, whatever it is that you're facing, if it has a name, there's a name that is greater than that name. So cancer is a name, but I know a name that is higher than the name. Diabetes has a name. COVID has a name. If they named it, guess what? You have authority over it. Because this is what it said. Look what it said in Matthew in verse 1. It said, all sickness, all diseases. What's all? What's all? Oh, so COVID is in there, cancer is in there, anxiety is in there, depression is in there, like low, bl low blood pressure, high blood pressure, any blood pressure, it's all in there, because it's all. All. That's what I'm reading, it says all. So if you're dealing with something in your body today, and I want, if you're in person or watching online or watching the rebroad, whatever it is, if it has a name, because it says this, we read it earlier, Philippians says that therefore God elevated him and gave him the highest honor and gave him a name above what? All other names. So if what you're dealing with has a name, guess what? It has to bow to the name of Jesus. And as you go, as you speak to that thing in Jesus' name, you're no longer speaking in your authority. You're now speaking in the authority that was given to you because all authority was given to him. And he says, just speak in my name. So if it has a name, it has to bow. And who does it have to bow to? What's his name? Say his name. Jesus. Come on, say his name with some faith. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Can you feel faith just stirring up here every time you say his name? Just say Jesus. Jesus. You know, we went through a battle and seven eights this week. <laughs> Like, my goodness, and I don't like to glorify the devil. I don't like to even give him an opportunity. To, uh, but this week, my goodness, I just, I'm like, I don't even, it was coming. You know when it says when they come from every side? That's what it felt like this week. And you know what? It came a point later in the week. Now, you see, now this is the thing about us, right? So I've been, like, God has been, like, I've been studying this thing out for probably the last month. And just because you know something or you've been studying something, it don't mean you're always aware of what you need. Because oftentimes God will give you what you need before you need it. So what I needed, I already had. So I sat down one day and I was just like, Lord. Now this is like later in the week, eh? Like you think to yourself, like, geez, couldn't I deal with this like early in the week? You know, like a smart person. And I'm sitting late in the week. The worship's playing. I mean, like, curtains is closed. Hoodies on. In the dark. Worship is on. And I'm just like, Lord, like I just, I need you. Because sometimes when you're desperate, you'll do whatever it takes. I'm, Lord, I need you. Tears are running down. And I'm not exaggerating, like this was really me. And I'm waiting for the Lord to say, son, it's going to be okay. I love you. You know how people say like, oh, the Lord loves you. I know he loves me, but I need to get out of my situation. And the Lord said this to me. He said, don't forget the fight you're in. And immediately I remembered the scripture that we're dealing with this whole series that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't wage war after the flesh. So yeah, I'm trying to deal with something spiritual in the natural. So I'm trying to do worship. I'm trying to read enough. I'm trying to do things naturally without getting instruction as to how to fight it. That's why we said you need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what weapons to use and how to use it in any given situation. And so this is what the Lord said to me, and I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting for this profound revelation, and he says, all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone. I said, everyone, Lord. 
Everyone that calls, so you got to do something. I called on the name of the Lord. And that word saved is, means sozo. It means to be saved, to go to heaven. It means healed. It means delivered. It means made whole in every area of your life. In your heart, your mind, your soul, every area. He said this to me. He said, call on the name of the Lord. And I said, Jesus. 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 I couldn't say anything else because I didn't know anything else. And all I heard, I got a weapon and he said, call on his name. And all I did, I sat there on my couch and I said, Jesus. I couldn't even say it loud. as Jesus. 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 And all of a sudden, faith begins to rise. Jesus. 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 And all of a sudden, what was weighing you down begins to lift because it can't stand in the presence of the Lord. Because when you call on his name, every knee, every knee shall bow. And I said, Jesus. And I began to call in his name and the thing lifted. I said, Whew. Is that all I needed to do? Forgive me for not asking you first. <laughs> and sometimes we take too much. So guess what happened? Because you know sometimes the enemy likes to come around for round two. Just in case you didn't believe what you did the first time. You know what I did? Jesus. 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 I called on his name. Because everyone who calls on his name shall be saved. Not everybody that qualifies. Not because all my boxes are ticked. I didn't get it all right. But he said, everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that was the 12. <laughs> so that was the 12. And I'm thinking to myself, like, we can be cool. Like, I can, I can be cool because they lived with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They ate with Jesus. They went on every ministry trip with Jesus. They saw the most miraculous things happen naturally, physically, right in front of them like nobody's ever seen before. They've heard wisdom. They said, what manner of man is this? We've never heard such things. So, so when, 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 when I hear that Jesus gave the 12 authority and they laid hands on the sick and it happened, like, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, they should. If you live with Jesus, like, I mean, come on now. If you don't, then like, where have you been? Just by association, you're going to have something fall on you. So I'm good with that. But now the problem comes in that there was these other disciples, these 72 other people that weren't the chosen few. All of a sudden, Jesus is like, yo, you 72, come here. You're just regular folk, regular disciples. You love me, believe in me, right? I'm going to give you that same authority. But here's what I want you to do. You have it. But now you've got to do the same thing. Guess what that is? So as they go, right? So these 72, so now that challenges me now because I'm one of the 72. I'm not that select chosen few that lived and walked and ate and did, but I'm one of the 72 now. But Jesus gave me the same authority he gave the apostles. But I want you to see what it says here in Luke 10, 17. All I want you to see is when they came back. Because the testimony is a testimony of what you overcame, of what you, of the victories that you won. That's a testimony. So look what it says this. When the 72 disciples returned. So you can't return unless you go. Miguel can't go back to Brazil unless he comes to Cape Town. You see, he came to taste the promised land and he's going to go back and take the fire with him. Glory to God. So here's what I want you to see. I call these guys 72 rookies. And if you play sport, like these were 72 rookies. These, these 72 plus the 12, nobody, zero, none of them have ever laid hands on one sick person, healed one, like delivered one, raised one person. Not one of them have had the experience. But Jesus said, go. So that tells me. None of these guys went to seminary school. None of them got the, you, you have to pray, just these are the 10 steps. These, this is the church lingo, and that's how we disqualify ourselves. Like, you know what? I don't pray like Uncle Andre. I don't pray. You know, I don't pray. You know, when Noah prays, like the heavens come down. You know, like, like, this is what I want you to see. So we disqualify ourselves, but Jesus is like, but I gave you the same authority. And, some, and what does he say? Come like a little child. Be healed. In Jesus' name, whoa. Oh, you mean I didn't have to scream and pray in tongues for 35 minutes before there was a major breakthrough and convulsions and all of these things? And I'm not against that and opposed to that things. But I'm saying is, can we just come back to the simplicity of the authority that were given to you? So there was a regular 72 rookies. 
72 of them. And they go out, and this is what it says. So they went out, how many? Two by two. I love that. Because this is in the Bible says that when two touch agree about anything, anything, is, is, anything's like all, right? So if, you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that you ask, anything that you ask, guess what? It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Find you somebody that can dare to believe. Just find you one person that can dare to believe with you. Because it says this, when you agree concerning anything, this is, so they go out two by two, and when the 72 returned, they joyfully reported to him, Jesus, you are not going to believe what happened. You, 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 Jesus, like you don't even, you don't know what, just, like you weren't there. You, you'll never believe what happened. Okay, I, I would have probably said that to Jesus, like, Jesus, yo, you should have been there. <laughs> like, it's great, like, you should have been there. And it says this, this, they're like, Lord, even the demons obeyed us. But here's the key part, when we used your name. <laughs> they were smart enough to know they didn't have the authority, but they're like, yo, uh, demons, in Jesus' name, can you get out? Ah, out they go. Jesus, do you believe that they obeyed us when we use your name? Like, I can just picture this playing out because we're like, oh, yeah, you know, the disciples, they cast out demons. Like, that's a big deal. They've never done it before, yet they go there and they just use his name? That's all they did. That should set you free today. Now, you don't have to wait for Pastor so-and-so and Prophetess uh, Shaquida and Apostle Shanene and all that. You don't have to wait for them. So when you're at your job, when you wherever you are, in the grocery store, playing on the field, whatever it is, and something doesn't line up with heaven, guess what? You have the authority. Amen. And you know, what's, what, I like to ask two questions. What's the best thing that can happen if you step out by faith? Is that God will show up. Amen. What's the worst thing that can happen? They just stay the same. So what are you going to lose? But I guarantee you, He's never let me down. I'm not saying that everybody I've prayed for got healed, but he's never let me down by giving me the grace and the boldness to step out. Yes. And here's the thing. The problem was never on his end. I always go back and say, Lord, what, what, what happened? And the Lord will begin to show me. The one time the Lord said to me, he says, because you try to apply formula over, over, uh, over my instruction. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit's going to tell you what weapons to use in which scenarios. And he says, I will fill your mouth. So you don't just pray repetition prayers da, 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 in Jesus' name. Okay, no, no, no. How do you want me to pray? What's actually the situation? Oh, there's nothing wrong with your body. Listen, you just need to forgive your dad. Father, I repent now for what my dad did to me. Oh my goodness. That, that, that is just gone. Because the Holy Spirit knows exactly what's wrong with you. He knows exactly how to fix you. Because he was there when you were knitted. Where do you take your device? You take it back to the manufacturer because they know how it was designed. So ask the Holy Spirit. And so as a kingdom citizen, you have benefits. This is what Jesus said. And man, I love Jesus. He said, until now, until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. But this is, what, this is, what, this is the benefits that you get to do. Ask. And you will receive that what? Your joy may be full. So here's what I want you to understand. Jesus is like, yo, I know you've never done this before, but I'm telling you this is the strategy. You get to use my name when you go to the Father. So now when you go to the Father and ask, he doesn't see you as you, he sees you as me. So I come to the Father in Jesus' name. Do you know who the Father sees? Jesus. He's like, I want you to go, to my, I want you to go in my name because my name carries weight. That's what it does. So when you ask the Father in Jesus' name, the Father will do it. Why? So that your joy may be full. Because the Father's joy is full. Jesus' joy is full. The Holy Ghost is joy is full. Their joy is good. So who, who's, who gets more joy out of this situation if Noah goes and he gets hooked up? Who walks out there joyful? He does. I get a little bit of joy. Or, or let me put it this way. When God heals you, Who's more joyful? 
God that healed you or you that got healed? So now he's saying, when you ask in my name, the Father's going to do it so that your joy may be full. Isn't that good? So, so the question is, is that, so are you getting the picture? Are you getting some clarity and understanding of what weight and authority the name of Jesus carried? But I had this question because I had this thought because this is a real situation. It's like, okay, but I, I've prayed and I've, you know, I've used it in Jesus' name and all of these kinds of things. But why is it that I, some people see stuff work and stuff don't? We've got to go there. Because I don't want you to walk out here and want to say, in the name of Jesus, da 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 and then nothing happens, and you're like, ah, this thing don't work. You just spent however long telling me about this thing, and it's just, you know? No, 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 no. This thing works, believe me. Because I've got to be honest with you. There's people out here trying to use that name, but they're trying to use it like a wish. You know, Jesus, will you give me that promotion at work? In Jesus' name, Amen. In fact, Susie, can you agree with me? Because the Bible says that when two or, two or three agree, like, it shall be established. Like, like, and I start quoting all these verses, right? And so what happens is you don't get the promotion. And you're like, oh, this thing doesn't work. No, it didn't work because you were always late for work. It didn't work because your work ethic sucked and you just did the bare minimum. That's why you didn't get the promotion, not because his name didn't have authority. But what we wanted, this is how we pray. Lord, can you do this? I wish that you would do this for me in Jesus' name. Because we think it's like a genie in a bottle. Have you ever watched those movies? You get three wishes. <laughs> genie, can you make me rich? Ah, you see, I can't do that unless you use the right word. So what you do is, I wish to be the wealthiest person on the earth. And the genie's like, your wish is granted. Right? Because you use the right, na- because you use the right word. Right? So you want to use the name of Jesus just like that. But now here's the thing, it's like, but now I don't understand, like it says, ask using my name and I will receive it, like that's the parameters, like, but now, let me give you some more clarity, because I believe that this is really going to bring clarity, like, because I want you to walk out your strong, I, I'm not here to entertain you, I'm not here to give you a nice little message and off you go, and all of that, I want you to walk out here and actually take dominion, I want you to rule and reign in this life as kings, I, I want you to live the life that Jesus said, I've come to give you abundant life, to have and enjoy to the full until it overflows, that's what I'm after today, Amen. so if that's what you're after, then let's go after it, because this is what happens, and I want to just show you this, in Acts chapter 19, and I'm just going to paraphrase, right, so so God gave Paul this like unusual, um, unusual grace and, and, and un- to do unusual miracles, right? So like people touch his clothes, like people were getting healed and delivered, like they sent the aprons and like people were just getting delivered, like yeah, take my hoodie and go. And so look what these guys say, there was a group of Jews, right? They were traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits. And so now we understand what their mission was, they wanted to go from town to town to cast out evil spirits, right? But then it says this, that they tried, they, they tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation saying, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. And look what happened. The one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, they're like, Jesus, I know. I know Jesus. I know Paul. You see, they weren't talking about Paul because Paul knew Jesus. So Paul, he operated in the authority of Jesus. And when you begin to operate in the authority of Jesus, they know who you are because they recognize him. Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Who are you? Why do they say that? Because you are out of relationship. You're trying to use an authority out of relationship and it doesn't work. So it, <laughs> it overpowered them, attacked them, and then they went streaking down the road. That's what happened. And I believe, like, look, you know, I, I, it's like maybe they, were, maybe they meant well. Maybe they really wanted to set people free. All of those kinds of things. But where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? The problem is they were trying to do it in their flesh. The problem is they were trying to use their own wisdom and their own authority outside of relationship with Jesus. Because where does the authority come from? Jesus. He called the disciples to himself and gave them. So when you come to him, when you receive him, he then gives you the authority. Are you with me? This is important to get because the name of Jesus is not a magical spell. 
Because look what they said. I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Clear indication that they did not have relationship. So they're trying to operate something from a distance. I can't operate. You know what they, they say like power of attorney? It can't actually be transferred. It can't be transferred to another person. Only the person that has the authority can give the authority. And they have to chop and change it. But the person that's been given it can't, can't give it to anybody else. So we can't operate in this authority from a distance. We've got to come to him. Incantation simply means it's a series of words to cause magical spells or charms. So that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to work this thing up based on, hey, I think I heard the disciples say something like this, 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 and this. And I know Paul's got this miraculous thing going on in his life. So in the name of Jesus, I heard Paul say Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches? See, that's what we want to do. Come back to relationship. Come back to relationship. Because you, access, because you access his name and the weight it carries through relationship. Now this is the confidence that we have in him that we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. So this is where the picture becomes clearer as to when he says you can ask in my name, it says this, you have a confidence when you ask according to his will. And where do we find out his will? In the book. So when it lines up with the book, you know now you can have confidence in what you ask for you're going to receive. So now you're not like, hey, you know, Brother Boo over there, Lord, he looked good. You know, he told Doc he got a six-pack or maybe eight, I don't know. But in Jesus' name, can he be my husband? Hold, oh, pump your pegs, girl. Like, he's already married. He's already married. Like, that's not his will. That's not his will. You want to use the name of Jesus, but that's not his will. In fact, the Bible says, don't covet your neighbor's wife. So that's outside of his will. So stop trying to pray for somebody else's husband and wife. Get your own. Just you believe God. I don't know who that's. Maybe it's for somebody online. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. So if you know that he hears you, if you know that he hears you, whatever you ask, whatever you are, whatever you ask, whatever you ask, because you know that he hears you, whatever you ask, you know that you have the petitions that we asked of him. There's confidence in this. Now when I ask, I ask with such confidence. When you pray for someone, you know it's his will for them to be healed. So now you ask in Jesus' name, be healed. Sickness, leave your body. Now I have confidence because it's his authority that's going to do it. Because it's his will. Because his word shall not return unto him void. So when I pray his will, when I speak his word, it's not going to return unto him void, but it shall accomplish what it pleases, and it, and it shall prosper in the thing which he sent it. Whew, so good. But he that comes to God must do what? Must believe that he is. He must believe that he is. So who is Jesus? He's a provider. He's a healer. He's an advocate. He's a friend. He's a father. He is your peace. He is love. He is your very present help in your time of need. That's who he is. And so much more. Write this down. Faith gives you access to who you need him to be in every season of your life. So he that comes to God must believe that he is. So I'm going to close right now. And I'm going to give you my last point. You can have faith in his name because you have faith in the person. You can have faith in his name because you have faith in the person. And his name is Jesus. So again, the question that I ask you is that why are some seeing God move and others not? Peter gives it to us right here in Acts chapter 3. The man gets healed. man gets healed. All of a sudden, Peter saw an opportunity to preach to these guys. And he says this, what is so astounding about this? Peter, Dude's been lame since birth. What do you mean? Of course it's astounding. But he's like, what's so astounding about this? And why look at us if though, if though we made this man walk by our own power and godliness? Why are you looking at us as if we did that? Verse 16. Clearly, he says this. The name of Jesus has healed this man. And you know how lame he was before. This is the key phrase in this entire passage right here. 
You want to know why some are seeing God move and others not? You want to know why you, what, where your, what connects the authority that God has given you to see the manifestation of it? It's right here. It says, faith in Jesus' name has caused the healing before your very eyes. I can know about the name. You can preach to me about the name. But unless I have faith in the name, I won't see the authority that that name carries. It's faith in the name of Jesus. It's amazing because then they get taken into the high council because now the enemy comes at once and the enemy said this he said look here we can't stop these guys but maybe what we can do is we can get them to stop speaking in his name you can say anything else you want oh, Jesus loves you God loves you he loves you loves you loves you but one thing they wanted to stop above all of it Stop using his name. Stop using his name. And look at Peter and John said, Do you think you want us to obey you rather than him? We can't stop telling people about the wonderful things we've seen and heard. So I want to challenge you this week. Well, actually, I want to challenge you from today. Whether that's your job, whether that's your, at the gym, pumping iron, whatever it is that you're doing. My challenge is that you would step out in the authority that God has given you and see it activated. Because Colossians says that whatever you do, whatever you do, go for a haircut, whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, you go for a massage, whatever you do, get your nails did, whatever you do, do all in the name. Do all in the name. Do all in the name. Do all with the consciousness of His name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Do all with that consciousness of the name of Jesus. And then what you do is you give thanks to God. <sighs> Jesus. And the last words that Mark records in the book of Mark chapter 16, we don't have time to go there. These were the very last words that Jesus utters and then he gets taken up, seated at the right hand of the You know what he said? This was his sermon. It was the great commission. He says, go into all the world, right? Preach the gospel. Now it says this, look here. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You know what the next part is? In my name. In my name. In my name they shall heal the sick. I want, listen, listen. And then he gets taken up. The last thing, the last instruction, revelation, the last piece of something he gave them, the last words that uttered from his mouth is like, just as you go in my name, these signs shall, the one translation says, accompany them that believe. Some of you came here with someone today. You know what? They accompanied you. So as you go, guess what? His name accompanies you. As you go, these signs shall accompany you. So you never walk into a place alone. So Father, we thank you right now for your word. Holy Spirit, I ask that you move in this place. And Lord, we just surrender to you and say, you said we can ask according to your will. And so right now in the name of Jesus, would you just lift up your voice to the Father? And just let him know what he needs to remove right now. If it's sickness in your body, say, in the name of Jesus, you bow your knee. You leave my body. Lack, low self-esteem, discouragement, lack of purpose. Father, right now, I ask that you move, that you breathe, that you fill up and that you water the dry places. Remove every single thing that does not line up with heaven. And I declare in your body, in your life, as in heaven, on earth, in your job, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your callings, 
in your vocations as in heaven. And Father, we already give you the praise right now because we know that we have this confidence that when we ask according to your will, you will do it. In the name of Jesus. Freedom right now in Jesus' name. Every shackle broken. Every yoke destroyed right now by the anointing. Every bondage broken. Lord, I break this. The, I break what's been binding your heart like a stony heart like with chains I break it right now in Jesus' name I declare a soft heart a new heart with new and right desires in Jesus' name every wound be healed in Jesus' name I declare that you have the mind of Christ Father, would you remove the hurt? Would you remove the pain? Would you remove those things which are causing, which are causing your people to think low of themselves? And we cast down right now imaginations and every high thing which tries to exalt itself against the true knowledge of God. And we take captive right now and bring it into obedience to, the, to, to Christ. And I declare that your thoughts are good, your thoughts are lovely, your thoughts are pure, your thoughts are holy, your thoughts are of abundance, your thoughts are of the blessing, your thoughts are of life and life more abundant. Joy overflowing today from this moment. 